Hello, Internet. It's me, Hewlett, with another G Geek Diary for you, and it's Friday, which makes it follow-up Friday, and I can't believe it's already Friday. There's something about doing, like, three videos a week that somehow just shortens, truncates the week in a horrible way. Because um, I'm sure I'm still a week older, but it doesn't feel like I got that week. I want that week back. Um, so, I'm going to talk today about the Biohacking Brains Required video, which I'll put the link up here if you want to see it and get confused by it, because that seems to be what happened. Everyone is very confused by it, and I will apologize. I'm going to say just flat out that is my fault. I am sorry. I think I was trying to be too clever with my titles, and um, in doing so, I've terrified and uh, possibly scarred people for life. So I'm going to just clarify a couple of things here. Um, I've got my notes on my trusty computer. First off, I think a better term for what I am interested in is, is DIY bio. I just think it's a fascinating new movement that would basically open this up to, you know, to what I think, like computers, computers were always seen as this sort of, oh, only the... You know, only the computer people should be touching and playing with computers. Um, it's the same thing with biotechnology. I mean, um, biotechnology is seen as this thing that only the bio, you know, technology uh, uh, people and, and labs should be dealing with, and that's just not the case. Um, there are many experiments to get kids excited about this stuff, to get grown-ups excited about this, and that is what I wanted to uh, touch on with that video, and that's what I want to talk about. I, just, I would love to find out about this myself, and in doing so, hopefully, get some other people interested in this kind of stuff. Because in the same way that I love that McKay inspired people into physics, I personally would like to inspire people into all other areas of, of science and exploration because that's what I love. Like, I love opening things up and seeing how they work. And the idea of being able to build biotechnology as well is incredibly fascinating to me. Um, fascinating is my favorite word, fascinating. Um, but it is, that's, you know, that's what, I, that's what I love. I mean, I want to see how things work. Um, and I love the fact that this started a debate and that people were back and forth on this stuff. You know, we're um, hobbyists who want to uh, make a difference and want to learn this stuff, want to understand this stuff in a way that I don't think people thought was possible until this whole DIY bio movement happened. Um, so a couple of definitions for you. Uh, first of all, I went to DIYbio.org um, where Mackenzie Cowell and Jason Bobe, I'm not sure how to say it, I'm sorry, um, put it best. Um, they're the guys who founded this DIYbio.org uh, thing. And they said that DIY Bio is a network of individuals from around the globe that aims to help make biology a worthwhile pursuit for citizen scientists. And that's it. That's, I think that's just a great, in a nutshell, way of, of talking about what I'm interested in. And this is a subject that I have discovered again. Um, you know, I sort of touched on it before. Um, in my own sort of reading and, and, and fumblings around the internet, but QDragon really sort of focused me in on it and said it was something that he was very interested in, and I thought, great, let's see if we can help him out, and I am now, I'm hooked, I'm fascinated. So uh, I, let's go to QDragon for that, because QDragon has um, basically, he was saying that the goal of this series that he wants to do, um, and that I want to help him with, um, is to educate people on biotechnology in general, independent or DIY uh, biotechnology, and to give interested people a foundation of knowledge for getting involved themselves. Um, and he hastens to add that um, as with mo all modern biotechnology, all modern biotechnology, meaning the stuff that they're doing in the big labs as well, um, you know, a majority of these tools relate to engineering and utilizing microorganisms such as bacteria, algae, and yeast. So, you know, we're not dealing with pathogens here. We're not trying to destroy the world. Um, a great chat with Jim and Eva who's saying like, look, if you want to do that, you wouldn't do it in a lab. You'd just stick someone on a plane and send them off with, you know, Ebola or something. You know, unfortunately, there is always a dark negative side to any science. If you want to use it for evil, you're going to use it for evil. And, you know, we do that, unfortunately. Um, uh, and I, I hate that about us. Um, and I question our you know, our right to be on this planet sometimes because of the stupidity uh, with which we use our um, incredibly, potentially fantastic technology and, and knowledge. Um, but, you know, that said, I think you don't give up on the whole thing because people can do bad things with it. You have to, you know, let's let's see what good things will come out of this. So there's a lot of warnings, a lot of warnings out there. DS Downs 001, uh, thank you DS Downs as always. I mean, great, great commenter on, on DGeek and also on the YouTube channel as well. He was saying, just be careful. He doesn't love it. He's not a big fan of the idea because I think, again, he, he thinks because of the, I guess because of the biohacking uh, term, he felt it was more the dark side of stuff. Um, and that is not what I want. I am not going to meld brains with my, with, you know, with my Lego mindstorms over there. Um, but he said he warned me to watch out because look what happened with Splice. It's nice. I like it when it gets tied back to movies I'm in. 
Um, uh, Roddy F uh, mentions the Transcendence trailer. I'm not sure that's a warning about the film or a warning about um, you know what uh, what could become of me if I start downloading my intelligence to um, well, actually my intelligence probably would fit on a Lego Mindstorm. Now I think about um, it. Gothi 1985 warned me of replicators. I saw that coming. Um, Lord uh, Castabaris. Um, now it says Siberian here, but I know that's not what it means. It is autocorrected because it is actually Cybermen were his warning. Um, I always wanted to be a Cyberman. I just thought it'd be kind of cool. Uh, at least one like a leader of Cyberman. That's not really possible. They're kind of Borg-like, aren't they? Anyway, um, so uh, M. O'Shea says, you know, what about the ethics? You know, what about the ethics of something like bio um, hacking or bio or DIY bio? Um, and I would say, what about the bio, what about the the ethics of of um, you know big biotechnology companies? I mean, they probably have far worse ulterior motives than 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 you know hobbyists just trying to learn about biotechnology have. Um, you know, I mean, I'm not dismissing it out of out of hand. I mean, it's not. It's it is obviously there needs to be a code of ethics. There needs to be safety standards. Um, um, but I think you know, if we feel that companies are are capable of doing this stuff, then surely groups of individuals who are who are passionate and excited about the subject, surely they should be allowed to do it. I, I mean, I, I I just want to make sure that it doesn't get sort of shut down because of that. So uh, DIY Spartan Biotech has done a lot of chatting on this. I wonder why. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know what their affiliation is or anything. But um, uh, and I haven't actually looked into it. But um, just some great comments. And I just and thank you, frankly, for getting in there and 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 defending it and and discussing it in a polite and smart, intelligent way. Um, there's a number of discussions there, and, and, and DIY Spartan Tech, Biotech was, was involved in a lot of them. And I think that's the kind of stuff I love seeing. I love, I love when people who've never met before start chatting online about um, the, the silly sort of passions and excitements that I, that I have in these videos. So I, I thank you for that. I, that's a very heartwarming experience to see happening on, in the comments section. So you know, thank you. Uh, they also suggested this, this, called, this thing called um, Biotechs. Which is a little terrifying to me because I keep thinking about killer bees. But basically, their their goal is to genetically engineer bees to make them resistant to every single disease because bees are dying out in ridiculous numbers. In fact, in China, they have to pollinate the plants themselves. They don't. There's not enough bees that they. There's, there's so few bees that they're like self pollinating. Self pollinating <laughs> sounds a bit rude, doesn't it? Um, but basically, they have to do it manually because the bees are no longer there to do it for them. Um, and so their goal was to sort of, I think, basically sort of crowdsource the ability to genetically change them in a way that they can sort of survive. Um, again, a little worrying because I just keep thinking about that cover of Killer Bees um, uh, from the 1970s you know, um, and, the, and, 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 and happily learning that it was too cold in Canada for them. So I think the best suggestion for the biotech, biohacking, or whatever we want to call it, thing is, it was from a number of people, including DIY Spartan Biotech, um, which was Ellen Jorgensen. Uh, it's an Ellen Jorgensen TED Talks. I love TED Talks. I could live on TED Talks. TED Talks is like... That's, you know, if we could be one iota as inspiring as TED Talks are, I would be so thrilled with this, with this, whole, this whole channel. Um, not that I'm not already, but I would be even more thrilled. Um, and basically, uh, she talks about the fact that we have personal computing. Why not personal biotechnology? Um, you know, why not personal biotech? I mean, we're, why not citizen scientists doing this kind of stuff? I, I, I'm sort of reminded of the days of computers where it was like, oh, no, there was like this sort of this this sort of Wizards of, Wizard of Oz kind of curtain in front of the computers and only the people who knew the arcane skills and the right words to conjure up the magic computer. The reality is it's just people who want to keep their jobs. This stuff doesn't have to be complicated. And if it is complicated, then great, get it out there so people can learn it and understand it themselves. The idea that biotechnology is, is relegated only to these giant biotechnology companies or only to people who, um, who have the necessary degrees, you know, that it doesn't make any sense. I mean, Electronics kits, um, you know, all sorts of DIY projects are out there. Why, why not biotech is basically what she's saying. And it's a very inspiring um, um, uh, talk that she gives. And, and she just, uh, yeah, she just sums it up beautifully. I highly, highly recommend that. Hopefully, I, again, I'll have a link for you there, if not in the description. Um, really, really great to see that. Um, uh, Randall Mass brought up uh, BackyardBrains.com. Oh, my God, the, the gadgets they have there. They've got... You know, they've got these spiker boxes that basically measure the electrical impulses in, well, they may allow you to listen to electrical impulses in the um, legs of cockroaches that have been, it's been removed. It, it's, if you read all squeamish, you shouldn't, you shouldn't look at it, but it is fascinating. Um, I watched it with a sort of a warped and twisted uh, um, uh, fascination um, because it, it just, again, the technology has become cheap enough um, and portable enough that we now, 
it's in our hands now. We can we can experiment with this stuff now. Um, I feel sorry for the cockroaches. Next though. up, Cloud Skipper Dreaming uh, mentioned these guys, um, Edvotech, which have all these basically biotech educational kits and videos. Like it's it's amazing. Like it's it's basically electronics kits only done with with biotechnology. So you should definitely check those out. And their videos are, are fascinating, really nicely done. They suggested to look at, though there were some talk about ethics, there's some ethic issues here, these uh, glowfish um, uh, that, are, that are available out there that basically they are, they're you know, genetically engineered fish. To, they're just engineered to glow in the, in the aquarium and look cool. So I'm not sure about that one myself. Um, John Freeman uh, mentioned this, this wonderfully crazy, strange character um, called Left Anonym. I don't know how to say their name, but basically there is a there is a not terribly good video, but you, you get a sort of a sense of her and what she's up to. She is basically doing self surgery and implants. I think the term sort of like the this sort of the cool biohacker um, terminology is grinder, where she's basically putting like subcutaneous stuff into her own skin and trying it out and getting sick and all sorts of stuff. I mean, it's it's I would. It makes my skin crawl. But again, there's so much stuff for writing here. From, from a fiction standpoint or science fiction, I mean, this, this is fodder um, for this stuff. Oh, and I actually mentioned that. Uh, Karen Pike uh, used the term plot bunny. She said this is a fantastic plot bunny because basically the idea of biotechnology got her thinking about, about um, some writing she wanted to do. And she, she wanted to do. And I, again, that's it. That's what we're here for, to inspire people into action, whether that is um, DIY biotech or writing about science fiction or science fact. Uh, Julie B, bless her, uh, was, doesn't know anything about it, but she said she looked it up and she found her londonbiohackspace.org. And I thank you very much for that. Um, that's, uh, again, I'm glad. I hope, I hope we can inspire people to, to go and look and explore stuff that perhaps they wouldn't have looked for before. Julie B, I think is a different person. Julie B is different than Julie B, I believe. But if not, well done, Julie B. Um, and she mentions uh, this Cancer Research UK's gameplay to cure cancer. And basically what it is, is it's like playing asteroids and curing cancer at the same time. My kind of multitasking. Um, I don't even know how it works, but basically what they're saying is that by sort of navigating through these, these um, asteroid fields and, and completing these little missions, you are analyzing real cancer data for scientists. So saving them hours and hours of work by playing this game, which is just like, what an amazing idea. Like, I imagine what you can apply that to. Um, what other things you could apply that to? Um, I'm, I'm fascinated to see how that would uh, what would work. If anyone's got any um, understanding or or uh, inf more information on that, you should let me know because I would I'd be very curious to follow up on that. Um, um, that's a whole other again another whole video to itself. Uh, uh, Bella was talking about said, look, you should start doing these geek news weekly. Basically, you should do like a geek news blog is what she was saying. Um, and I'd love to do that. I, I think you know I would like to have more sort of specific niches for that. Um, and I'm exploring a few of those uh, myself, and, uh, and Q Dragon is also doing the same. So um, hopefully, um, hopefully we'll have some stuff for you in the near, not too distant future, in that regard. Because I, again, this stuff is obviously fascinating to me. It's not a new show, this obviously, but it, it's um, I do like getting it out there and, and getting talking about it. And I'm going to say right off the bat, I uh, I will not have touched on everything and all the comments here, and I apologize. There's, there was a lot in there and, and a lot of really good stuff to sort of follow up and explore. So. Um, a couple of shout-outs, though. Obviously, big shout-out to Q Dragon, who is pursuing this um, for a series of his own, um, and that's why I'm doing this. I want to help him out with that, and and um, and um, in, in hopefully in some in some little way be involved in in what I think would be a great success. Um, also, uh, Jim the Evo, again, a great chat with him this and week. Again, his sort of his wonderful sort of fanatical love of viruses and and uh, like truly like a love of viruses. He gets he gets sort of mushy about it. Um, and everyone else who commented, thank you very much. So keep those comments coming. We will, obviously, we will be revisiting this. I will let you know when I have had more experience in this regard. Um, I am going to look up the Toronto Biohacking um, or DIY Bio group. Um, and if anyone knows anybody there, by all means, uh, put me in touch. That would be fantastic. Um, I am hoping to, I'm looking for sort of a 101 type of uh, biotech stuff because uh, biology was a long time ago for me in school. I think I gave that up a long time ago. I failed that course a long time ago. So... Um, Thank you all, um, and until we geek again, cheerio!